Welcome to The Advocates, I'm Aaron Dean. Kevin McCarthy has been voted out as House Speaker. Now both sides are wondering what's next. It's a historic vote. Leaders from both sides, Democrat and Republican, are saying that they could not trust McCarthy with his words. Republicans remain divided between conservative and moderate Republicans. The House itself is paralyzed until they're able to find a Speaker. One Democratic lawmaker says that McCarthy has no one but himself to blame. For us, it's about uh, keeping the integrity of the House. It's about remembering that when you are an elected official, your word um, is all you've got. People have to be able to trust what you say is what you will do. Uh, and we did not have that kind of partner and a leader that we can believe in in that kind of way um, within Speaker McCarthy. And now he no longer is the speaker. He happens to continuously make history in all the wrong ways. Congress is facing at least one deadline, another looming shutdown in mid-November. The Supreme Court is preparing to hear arguments about the number of hotels that violate the Americans with Disabilities Act. The landmark decision aims to shield individuals with disabilities from discrimination in public accommodations and other settings. Now, the justice will consider whether a self-appointed tester can sue hotels over alleged violations of the law. Disabilities rights advocate Deborah Lawfer brought hundreds of lawsuits against hotels for not complying with a rules. The complaints are an effort to force the hotels to act. Legal experts say that this strategy known as testing is necessary to ensure enforcement of the law. Switching gears, Danny and Ron have saved over 14,000 dogs with their organization Danny and Ron's Rescue. They connect our furry friends with loving homes while housing dogs on their farm in South Carolina. Now the question is, how do they do it all? Well, they tell me that their love for or man's best friend knows no limits. Danny and Ron, hello, how are you? We're we well, are great. You. Happy to be here. <laughs> well, we're so glad to have you. Can, can one of you kind of walk us through how you all started your rescue organization? Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> we, we, you know, through life, you know, we train horses for a living, but we always would go to the shelter and get three or four dogs that were on euthanasia, bring them back and try to rehab them a little bit and get our friends in the horse world to adopt them. But then when Hurricane Katrina hit, um, we kept seeing pictures on TV of all the dogs floating in the water, crawling on top of roofs, and decided we probably needed to do something to help a lot of those dogs that were displaced. And... Um, so we started sending our horse trailer down with supplies and bringing dogs back. And by the end of Katrina, we had saved over 600 dogs. Um, and because of that Katrina work, we were the 2008 ASPCA honorees of the year for doing our Katrina work. About one month ago, we hit our 14,000th adoption. Uh, all of our dogs live loose in our house as part of our family. They don't live in panels or runs. So it's a, it's quite a bit, you know, a very home atmosphere for them. We really didn't think that we had any of the parts to be a rescue because we didn't have kennels. We didn't have uh, all sorts of places set up for them. We just kind of ad lived as we went and it was uh, quite an undertaking. And so we really didn't feel qualified, but we were informed that with all we've done, we were definitely qualified. And, you know, looking back on all the work that you have done to save these dogs, what does it mean, you know, to you both to give these dogs a, a second chance at being man's best friend again? Oh, that's, well, that's why we do it. <laughs> um, we, uh, once we started, we, we really stepped in and quickly realized it was a no turn back situation. Mm -hmm. um, because the feeling was so good that how, how many were rehomed and how many we'd made healthy, how many we'd made secure. And, uh, and the fact that they all lived with us during all these times was what made such a difference and made it to where people wanted to adopt from us because we could tell them so much more about the dogs than so many places will. You know, we make a lifetime promise to them once they're saved from either a puppy mill or an abuse, court abuse cases shelters that we make a lifetime promise that they will always remain safe 
in our contracts, it reads, you can never give the dog away. If you give the dog away, they agree to pay us $5,000 and they'll be sued. Um, every dog's microchipped in our name and stays in our name. So my cell phone's the first number that's called. And so we always promise our dogs that if somebody gets ill or financial problems and they can't keep them anymore, we send transport and they come back and they can either be rehomed or they can live here is what we call sanctuary dogs. Could you kind of elaborate on the impact that you've had on your elderly, disabled and veteran programs? Yeah, we were real fortunate because of the film Life of the Doghouse. It put our rescue in a whole different dimension. We started an elderly program, which we help the elderly if they can't afford their vet bills or the food for the dogs so that they can keep their dogs. We paired with Meals on Wheels of Palm Beach County, and they started a program called Anna Meals, and we fund all of that. And anybody that has an animal, we pay for their pet food. And if they need assistance in veterinary care, we do that. Um, we basically do the same thing for handicapped people. Um, we do that for veterans. Um, one of our, I guess, most touching veteran story was a man called me from Chicago and he wanted to surrender his dog to us. And I asked him, I said, sir, why do you want to surrender your dog? And he said, well, sir, I'm a Normandy vet and I live on the second floor and I'm 90 years old and I can no longer go up and down the stairs to take my dog to go to the bathroom. And so he said, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give it up. And I said, well, would you like to keep your dog? And he said, yes, because I have no family. My dog is my life. So what we did is we hired five dog walkers uh, to walk his dogs and then got them to pick up food for him at his vet's and take his dogs um, to the vet when it needed shots. But we helped the elderly and handicapped and we're real proud of our outreach programs. I mean, just like we, you know, sent a lot of money to Maui um, with the fires to help with all the burned dogs and cats there. Um, when Australia caught on fire, we sent money for the, all the search and rescue dogs. So we do a lot of outreach. We just believe that you know, we're on this earth to give, not to take. HIV advocate Cedric Sturdivant knows what it's like to look for and find community. He's working to connect people in the Mississippi Delta with communities and resources. Now he's sharing some advice in the aftermath of his own personal loss. Take a listen. The Delta is very socially conservative. And despite that, you're still championing things like you know equality and pride you know and many people clearly look up to you in that area to to wrap this up what advice would you give someone who might not have the community that they see i would say uh one advice i would give a person that may not have the community is basically build a community within yourself and in saying that meaning you know, be be different, be unique. And if you think you can do it, go out and start something because people will get behind you. Even if they don't at first, they'll see that, hey, uh, this person is making a difference. This person is gonna make a difference. Uh, always be your unique self. Um, my uh, sister, a glorious third of it, she was the co-founder of this organization. And um, one thing that she taught me was, you know, says you can do it regardless. If people ain't behind you, oh, well, just go for it. Start doing it. And people eventually will see something positive out of that. And uh, unfortunately, I lost my sister about three weeks ago unexpectedly. But that will instill in me always that, you know, she had the drive and it kept telling me I had the drive, be different. Don't worry about what people say. If you ain't got nobody behind you, you keep going because you got God behind you and just keep going. Thanks so much for watching The Advocates. Download the app in the Apple or Google Play Store to stream us live. And you can even subscribe to our YouTube channel. For The Advocate Channel, I'm Aaron Dean.